Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome back to episode number 32 of this NHL 21 No Salary Cap Draft to Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that corner of the video right now. There will be a card with a link to the playlist. And if you do enjoy this video, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. So last episode, we got through the 2037 CPHA playoffs and uh, the Comets were able to win yet again beating the Windsor Wild Wings in a crazy seven game series. I would recommend you go back and watch that episode if you haven't seen it yet. And well, Comets three-peat on Stanley Cups and of course President's Trophies as well. So that is absolutely fantastic. And uh, we didn't really have any award winners this year apart from Sergei Kasparaitis, who was absolutely crazy for a defenseman. And of course, actually, Isaiah McMuffin had a fantastic year as well. He has been absolutely crushing it the last few years. So that's really good to uh, good to see. And then besides that, no other award winners from Kelowna anyways, um, but you can check them out there. And uh, if you want to go back and pause the video, go for it. Um, but today we are going to get into the last real episode of this series. Um... We had a comment here, Drayden Pletz. I asked you guys last episode, do you want me to end it now? Do you want me to do you know, one more episode, then do a wrap up, something like that? And I think the comment that I'm going to go for here is Drayden Pletz saying, I think you should do this off season to wrap up the series. And then for your last episode, I think you should sim to the end of the franchise mode and show the stats of the comments and any records broken through the entire league. And then he said, this was a great series to watch. I really enjoyed it. So that's great to hear. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying this series and that, you know, it is starting to kind of come to a natural conclusion. Of course, I am going to grind away and uh, get some seasons done off camera, just more so with screenshots for the last episode. That, so we'll wrap it up for this whole series on episode 33. But today we're going to get into the draft. I've already done my interviews and I think I've got a pretty good sense of how we're going to be going about this draft. So again, we have the rule of we can make one trade per season. And I pretty much always save it for the draft. It has really paid off in the long run for picking up some players that have made huge impacts on the Comets winning cups. So at this moment, we have pick number 25 and pick number 32 in the first round. I'm thinking we want to add some second round picks, preferably. Um, I'm seeing the Toronto Maple Leafs have got quite a few in here. So Toronto could be somebody that we, uh, we look to try and make some trades with potentially. Um, but I also want to show you guys just the draft class we're dealing with who I'm looking at prospect wise. So this is currently the top five, you know, pretty typical, you know, elite kind of top five. I kind of get the feeling that a guy like Zitnik or Maltby might be elite as well. Like, yeah, Maltby looks definitely looks like he could be elite um so i don't know how we could really i don't think there's too many teams in this top end that we would actually want to trade with i think i'm more so interested on the second round although maltby does look like a very interesting player i think we can acquire just as good players throughout later stages in the draft and as you can see i've got some guys pinned here fitzgerald i know the potential is not there but he's also the highest rank goalie in the draft so i assume he's going to be elite um smeed is no question nhl ready medium top six power forward klimchuk says he's a two-way i would not doubt if he's a power forward as well uh, maybe not his physical he might be a might be a playmaker or a sniper instead his puck skills look really good um, and then I got guys a little bit later, but we're also going to try to trade some of our late round picks because I just didn't see a lot later on in the draft. We got a two-year ETA offensive defenseman there in Duroche, and then another, this guy's a one-year ETA, Jamie Wyman, um, another offensive defenseman. I kind of am interested in him because I think he could uh, he could make our team. And of course, we got this other guy, Alexander Lapointe, um, as a center, probably a playmaker, but could be a sniper as well. Not entirely sure what he's going to turn out to be. So anyways, we don't quite have enough picks to land all these guys, but I think that I've kind of scouted out who's got picks that I think we're going to try to acquire here, and that would be the Toronto Maple Leafs. So really, they've got, wow, they have got like zero potential on their team. That's really sad, actually. I don't know. They're not that bad. They still got a guy like uh, Rodney Robertson, guys like that. But um, no, we want to try to snag some second rounders here. They got pick 48 and 51. 
Um, actually, hold on. What picks do we have? That's what I want to figure out, because... Ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this off or not, actually. Um... Yeah, no, I need an earlier pick for Wyman. Huh. This is tough now. I thought I could just trade with Toronto and make this work, but maybe not. <laughs> maybe Thunder Bay... You got two picks there. Oh, yeah, Thunder Bay. Sorry, Thunder Bay is definitely the team I'm trying to trade with. I totally wrote Toronto on my sheet for, like, who I think we should trade for. Now Thunder Bay's got the picks I'm looking for there. Absolutely. Okay, so if we can get pick 38 and 46 off of them, that would be great. Um, but I kind of just want to use a trade finder on this as well so that we get a pretty fair trade out of this. Um, I know you guys... Have, who have been watching this series for a while are like, wow, he just, uh, like, I just, you'd probably have this opinion that I just fleece every single team I make a trade with. That's probably not the case. I'm sure there have been teams that have won some trades with the Comets here over the years, but man, you look at our prospect pool as well, like, certain guys like Parker Nat, holy crap, he almost had a 120 point season. Guys like Parker Nash and uh, Cameron Bugstad, like, he also had 102, that's pretty insane. We got guys that are coming up through the system very quickly, and they're going to be making an impact quite soon. But um, let's go back to Thunder Bay, figure out what they... Uh, so you got 34 seconds left on the pick. I'm too slow. So anyways, the Brandon Broncos are going to select... What's his name? Dylan? DeAndre Sweat. Um, only scored 53 points in the um, German League, but... Still, 83 rated right wing playmaker is insane. I wish we had him, but we kind of don't really need him. We got we got some pretty insane players on this team still. Like the fact that Gustavo Colburn is 89 rated at just 21 years old is absolutely mind boggling, and he's only on a 5.5 million dollar contract too. Like there are some absolute godly players on this team who are really going to make an impact as we get a little bit further on. Um, through the simulation in the series, but at the same time, you know, we're probably not going to not gonna see too much of that highlighted for the remainder of this series. And I hit the trade block. Cool. That's not what I wanted. Okay, anyways. Um, thun Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay, Thunder Bay. It's... Where are they? There we go. Okay, that one and that one. Okay. If I can just get those two picks off of them. They want Cameron Bukestad and Isaiah McMuffin. That's a little ridiculous. Um, McMuffin the 25th can't do. McMuffin and Dempsey can't do. Oh. I think we can find other value rather than the goalies, but I'm okay trading Dempsey. I'm just not okay trading Deco or McMuffin at this point. So they want McMuffin. I can't offer them McMuffin. He's just simply too good. Maybe in a year or two time, once Cameron Deco really grows into the role, then yeah, then maybe. Then maybe. But he's an 86 rated goalie. We're not shipping him off. If anything, it's going to be Dempsey. Because, um, yeah, Travis Dempsey, although he's good, he's probably not going to turn out to be too high up in this uh, prospect pool of goalies. Obviously, I can't just tack on those two picks and make it a trade. It's not going to work. I'm going to need to give up something else. Um, so I think the player that we're going to look to move in this deal is probably going to be a guy along the lines of Schostrom, Kreutzer, somebody along those lines. Maybe even uh, Pavlicek. If I move Pavlicek and like Kreutzer, because those guys aren't really the top, most top end prospects, but they will be enough value, I think, to push this deal through. Maybe not. Maybe we can't do that. 
Uh, they only want to trade Jewel Farabee. Okay. What about some really low-end guys here? I'm looking for, again, we have to take on undrafted players. What about, like, these two guys? Can we take these dudes on and just use them as roster spots and then not re-sign them? Like, that would be a great trade. I would love to get those picks in exchange for only Dempsey, Pavlicek, and Kreutzer. That would be great. And trade is accepted. Beautiful. Okay, so that actually went a lot smoother than I thought. We don't lose any really top-end goalies. We keep this team together, and I think we got all the picks I want now. So, let's go over to pick 25. I'm going to start wiring off picks. Warner was pretty nice. Oi, Nima. Topi Nima, what a player, man. He's he's going to be something special. I'm calling that right now. Red Deer got a steal there. Um, holy crap, what a draft. Look at all these players, man. Like Archibald, I think I knew Archibald was good. But, okay, Zitnik didn't turn out as well. Hickey was okay. Obviously, the top five is just sick. All 80s, that's really nice. That usually doesn't happen. It usually drops off a bit. But... I'm going to stick with the guaranteed NHL ready picks over a bunch of these other ETAs that I'm not set on. Even like that Russell guy. I don't really want him. I want the forwards. I want the guys that are going to play it. You're in the, N or in the uh, AHL. Whew, yeah, 78 rated. That's gorgeous. Uh, Jude Klimchuk. Playmaker as well. Six foot three, 187 pound playmaker. He's huge. And not only that, but he also put up 72 points with Kingston last year. So he'll probably get one more year in the OHL, and then either he'll be NHL ready or like CPHA ready, um, or we'll put him down for a year in the AHL. So uh, that Russell guy was actually pretty decent. Um, same with Nick Purcell, 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 however you say his name. Um, but next up, that's quite the name, Abel Bukaboom. Buka boom. Um, but yeah, next up we're gonna take. I want to say it's Richard Smead, but it might be Richard. I think it's Richard. Richard Smead, another guaranteed NHL ready prospect that I just got good scouting on, and he is a medium top six. And go figure. How good is he though? Oh, and he's eighty rated. Okay, okay. Richard Smead is gonna get a good shot. He's got wow. Three and a half star skating, five star shooting, three and a half star physical. Wow, like this guy is a pretty darn complete player already. So yeah, Richard Smead is going to turn out to be sick as well. Um, all right, the next four players there. Again, we knew they weren't going to be great. Um, so next up, I mean, these defensemen, I know they're... They're going to be decent. Um, Brian Leach comparison is pretty nice for Duroche. So is P.K. Subban. I like that he's a left-handed shot on the right side, though. I really like that in my offensive defenseman. So I'm going to take Jamie Wyman. And he's just got a one-year ETA as well. And he's a medium top four, 72 rated. All right, that's really nice. And he's six feet tall. So yeah, that's a really nice looking defenseman there in Jamie Wyman. All right, so that's a really good start to the draft. We move over to pick number 46 now. And Duroche is a 70 overall. Okay. So yeah, those two were definitely like undisputably the best defenseman there. But Wyman can skate a lot better than Duroche, which is huge. But man, if Duroche actually develops that skill, like that's going to be scary. Uh, yeah, high defenseman there, Samuel Stokes. Okay, we're at pick 46. I think, yeah, LaPointe was the next guy I was going to take because he's probably a two-year ETA low elite. I'm not sure, but we're going to take him. And okay, oof, okay, he really was a decent low elite. 68 overall. Um, wow, yeah, uh, Alexandre LaPointe looks really good. He could be a, a future center that turns out to just be really good for this team. So anyways... Over to pick 64 now. We get a trade offer. I'm not going to take it. Ooh, Romano was a nice pick too. Another sniper. Um, Zajac, wow, was 65 overall. That's really high for a goalie. Normally, they don't end up that highly rated. Like, even a 60 is usually decent. So, I mean, I'm really happy with the point. Don't get me wrong. That was a great pick too. Um, but pick 64, I'm going to take Peyton Fitzgerald. And we're going to give him a shot, see if he turns out. Obviously, he's not uh, not Zajac, like this Zajac guy that they just got, whoever it was. Uh, 
Minnesota. Okay, so Fitzgerald is an elite. Um, Felipe Zajac, yeah, he's he's gonna be a future future award winner probably. Um, Peyton Fitzgerald, forty-seven overall, so more of just a prospect. But the last three picks of this round was was really nice. Jeez. Okay, over to pick ninety-six now. Uh, we see another Griffin go. Not Greg Griffin though. Uh, ooh, Fa Fawcett is 20, but still, really nice low elite player there. Um, who else do we have in here that's actually good? Uh, not a lot, actually. Oh, okay, another low elite in Sunquist. Uh, he is 19, though, so I'm really happy with our pick so far. We've nailed a lot of good 18-year-old players, um, so they're going to be great for the future of this team, even if we have guys retiring. Um... I want to say Kretschmann is good, but I had a guy pinned in here. I think he's way off the board actually now, but uh, yeah, this guy, Serge Gervais, um, 19 years old, but guaranteed three year ETA defensive defenseman. And well, okay. He's a low top four by the looks of it on our players drafted. Um, 65 overall though, not terrible. Um, you can't, you know, can't nail every pick. And Gervais might turn out to be something good, but who knows? All right, so over to pick number 128 now. And remember, we traded away our sixth and seventh round pick, so we only have up until round five uh, this year. But not a whole lot really going on here. Yeah, wow, that was a that was a pretty weak fourth round overall. Okay, so. <sighs> Heard me. Um, next up, we have got nobody pinned. Oh, this guy, Matthew Newendike, five-year ETA. Can't guarantee he's gonna be great, but he also falls in pick 149, which is like right before our next pick. Um, I'm just gonna trust it. I don't know if he's actually gonna turn out. I'm just really hoping he's like a medium top six or medium top nine even wouldn't be bad. And he is a medium top six. Nice. Okay, so Matthew Newendike is 50 overall. All right, but he is a, another playmaking center. So that's really good. Again, could develop into something eventually. Who knows? But uh, over to our last pick of the draft now, pick number 160. And I've got a goalie pinned here. Yep. Casey Flynn, 19 years old, but again, could turn into something fantastic. I'm assuming so anyways. And yep. Flynn is an elite, gorgeous. Okay, and 59 overall, obviously not a 65. Not like that uh, that other guy, but let's sim the last couple of rounds here. So round six sees Bouliard go, uh, Modano is really nice. Anybody else? Not really, wow. All right, so let's uh, let's sim the entire draft here. It's pretty much done, and didn't see any high potential players at the end there. So overall, I'm really happy with it. Gervais is the only kind of miss throughout that draft. I think Lapointe's got potential. Wyman might make it eventually, and I'm pretty much set on uh, Smead and Klimchuk making the team over the next three seasons or so. I would say, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty good draft. All right, so now we go to the resign phase. We got, ooh, Dante Spencer's expiring. That's not great. He's going to be freaking expensive, but that's okay. Um, I wouldn't, I, I don't see why he would want to leave, though, either. He's 68 years old. Holy crap. How how many awards does Buddy have? Four Stanley Cups, three Prezies. This guy has literally coached the team through everything. You got to love when your coach looks like this like that <laughs> 75 almost 75 percent point percentage that's insanity holy who's his favorite players redmond lamb and jason k interesting okay i mean obviously the offense is just insane these power plays yeah it, it makes so much sense like the way he coaches the way the team plays there's absolutely no question in my mind that Dante Spencer's the right coach for this team. And, well, let's see how the scouts are doing this year. Not too many expiries. Dimitriev. Maybe a couple others? Uh, just Co. All right. Looks good. 
That's what we like to see. Easy scouting. So, um, now that that's all done, we got a couple players hitting RFAs. Again, you know, we're not really too worried about the contract signings. I know we're going to get these guys back simply based on, okay. And of course, Kai Hartikainen literally does me dirty. I go, I know we're going to sign these guys. How much money is he going to want? Cool. I mean, I get it. He's probably an $11 million defenseman, honestly. Mainly just based on the fact that really this team is going to struggle without him on the back end. He's like literally our best defensive defenseman. There's no question about that for me. I assume Matty Harakala is going to want back on this team. Um, Rafael Guerrero, I would love to sign. He only wants a one-year contract. But then again, if we've got guys who don't want to play on this team, like, like look at Ariel Bentley wants to play on this team. He's a yes. Why wouldn't I sign him, right? Do we have Alex Ovechkin? Yeah, we do. We got Alex Ovechkin as a coach. Anyways, um, like, why wouldn't you want to sign guys that want to stay on your team, right? That just, it makes sense to keep him around. Chemistry-wise, probably not so much, but, like, look at Smeed, Schroeder, all these guys want to play on the team, and I have very limited roster spots this year. Like, I need to sign Bukestad. Any of our lower-end expiring guys, like... As much as I hate to say it, I think Dmitry Komatov's out. I think um, I think Magnus Lilia is probably out too. Just odd men out. Like they're not gonna get playtime. Bailey needs a contract. Um, Marks needs a contract. There's so many guys where it's like I look at it and it's like we have to sign this player. We have to bring him in because I'm not letting him walk. So for some reason, Lacerte signed. I don't know why I signed him. Um, McCarron's gonna get a release. Olsen needs a contract. He's good enough, I think. Or he's got the potential there anyways, so... Yeah, let's sign Jameson Olsen. I think... As much as Ned Calico was sick in junior, like, he, he was really crushing it in his final season, I think he's a walk. I think he's gone. As much as I hate to do that. I think we have to release him. I think we have to release this row guy as well. They're both gone, especially when we've got a guy like Marks who's ready to play. He's turning 20, and, well, he's going to get maximized optimal playtime in, in the AHL this year. Uh, a guy like McKenzie's gone. Uh, Josh Bailey. Josh Bailey? I can't remember what his name is. Joel Bailey, sorry. Joel Bailey's definitely getting the sign in there. I'm not set on Magnus Lilia yet. Um, a guy like Komatov, a guy like Vorobiev. As much as they've been absolute studs for us in the AHL, like, look at that, man. 78 points. He was our leading scorer, no question. <sighs> man, and Komatov being a seventh-round pick, I just wish he had grown more. Because, like, a 6'3", 200-pound sniper down the middle is hard to stop. Like, those guys are going to put pucks in the net. There's no question. But, unfortunately, we just have other guys that are just simply better. Like, potential-wise, anyways. Maybe not so much for five, six seasons in the AHL, like Vorobiev. But I have to clear the roster spots. That's the only way I can do this. So, <sighs> I think, well, obviously, Cali. Cali Bukestad? Cameron. Cameron Bukestad definitely gets the sign-in. Um, as much as I want Klimchuk, I think we send him back to junior for a year. I don't think he's getting the start. Versus a guy like, ben, holy Ben Skinner, man. 110 points. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Ben Skinner. Come, come play for this team, please. We want him. Definitely. Um, so, after that, I think Hedekin... Gets a one-year two-way. Same with the guy like Schmalz. He wants a $700,000 one-way deal. Uh, we can give him 975. Honestly, I think I should sign Parker Nash too. Because he outscored Bukestad, which is insane. Um, so let's offer him a deal. Um... Donahue actually grew. What the heck? He actually turned out to be really decent. 
That's kind of surprising. I thought he was going to be, like, below average. So, yeah, Jason Donahue. We'll sign him. We'll sign Kelvin Urkamps. No guarantee he makes the NHL roster, though. Um, Schroeder gets a re-sign. So, I guess he'll leave Smead and... Who is the other guy? Um, Smead and Klimchuk won't get signed yet because we still have guys like Komatov, Ekblad, players of that sort who probably deserve the playtime because they've earned it. Ekblad wants a two-year contract. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, we didn't really have any crazy names. Like, Guerrero doesn't want to play. He's going to walk. We're going to fill that spot without issue. So I think I don't want to let Bentley go because I know Ariel Bentley is like one of those undrafted steals, but I think Bentley and Guerrero are just gone. I think we need to clear some new roster spots overall. And then, of course, Whiting somehow is valued at that. It's ridiculous, but that's what he gets. Um, Metropolit or Metropolit, however you say the name. Darren's getting the contract, um, and of course we gotta sign Boris Dadanov. So yeah, um, let's advance a day or two, see what happens. Oh, Dante, you gotta sign with us, buddy. Uh, that's not great. Okay, so we get Heinrich. Uh, we should get the two scouts back, and then it should just be players. And Donahue signs, Schroeder signs, Komatov signs... Hardikainen signs the 11. That's good. Okay. Dadanov joins. Bukestad joins. Bailey joins. Harakala joins. Marks joins. Nash joins. Olsen. Skinner. Ekblad. Urkamps. Hedekin. Schmals. Metropolit. I think we got everybody. I think we got everybody and we still got some roster spots, which is kind of crazy, actually. So. I think at that point we should be looking to sign Smeed. Because, yeah, Richard Smead is just going to be a beast. Um, Ekblad didn't sign. Sorry. He wants more money, I think. He wants, like, a guarantee that he's playing. And it's like, well, you got to crack the roster first. But um, Wanvig didn't do great in Armada, honestly, which is too bad. But, um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on him. Bear Kalanos probably ain't gonna turn out which is too bad because he was a seventh round steal um Lilius complaining about playtime too i think with that situation um apart from that the roster looks really really sturdy um so nolan ekblad signs magnus lilia signs so our only expiring players remaining are guerrero bentley and that's it so yeah guerrero bentley we're gonna walk them they are gonna get new opportunities elsewhere because there's no doubt in my mind they're great players but we just simply don't have the roster spaces to house them anymore so I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. Um, oh, no, coaching staff. Right, 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 right. So. Um, I have to re-sign Spencer somehow. Um, so I think Donsk is the guy that's going to get fired here. up a little more space there he's asking for that i believe we have the budget um i might be wrong but i'm pretty sure we have the funds to re-sign dante spencer and gorgeous okay so we do get dante spencer back for another three seasons or so hopefully he doesn't retire right away as the comments have been good enough that he could retire as one of the better coaches in hockey history. But, um, okay, let's not do that. Okay, um, the only other guy 
I still want a sign that I don't think we did was uh was Rich Richard Richard Smead. Richard, that's the name. So yeah, Smead's the only guy that I really want to you know get on the team here. He's 80 rated, deserves to play at very least in the AHL. And yeah, I mean Niedermeyer's going to want a contract. He's going to be cheap for an extension. That's nice. Okay. Other extensions, Jason K, or sorry, not Jason, Charlie K, only wants $10.8 million for four more seasons. I mean, understandable. We got, um, what's his name here? Okay, we can't touch the years. 6.1 mil for Redmond for another five is really good. Um, but yeah, like, Cider's already 35. He wants an extension for one season. We have to keep our captain, man. He's been fantastic for the entirety of his career here. Latowski's going to be expensive, but he's a top four. Um, Scoville's grown, like, tremendously well. The fact that he's 81 rated at just 22 years old with that potential. We knew he was special when he started putting up 90, 100-point seasons in the WHL, um, especially for a third-round pick, but... I never actually expected him to be contending for a roster spot on our team, to be completely honest with you. Um, Kim, what are you doing? You're not going to get the playtime here over Cameron Dika. We all know this. Cameron Dika deserves like a 950 extension for a year. Maybe he has a breakout year. Who knows? But uh, I really don't think we even need to try and sign free agents. I think our team's set overall. And... Um, yeah, uh, not really a ridiculous setup for free agency here. I'm sure there's some good players, but Corbet is kind of the big name. Sokolov. Um, hello. Why were you not drafted? Marcus Sokolov just looks like an insanely good player for being undrafted. Ackerland's a Comets player. Albrecht. Albrecht's not bad either. That's actually insane. That certain guys like that have made it to free agency. Vickers, Boudreau. Nobody really insane here. Like Lukowicz, obviously, we know he's a good player. Same with Kron. Vince Kron, but again, drafted. We can't touch him. So, yeah. Um. Elton's even drafted. Yeah, so um, maybe we try to clear up one roster spot for uh, what's his name? I don't think we even can for Sokolov. I don't think we can, but maybe we have exempt uh, exempt spots as well. So anyways, let's sim to next season. Let's see if we get that uh, whatever his name Sokolov is. Um, so Niedermeyer resigns. We do get Marcus Sokolov. Nice. Okay. Latowski joins, Sokolov's going to be in. All right, we got everybody there. Redmond extends, same with Charlie K. This team's looking real good. I'm really happy with where they're at. And uh, All right, Skinner. Man, this is, this is a good setup. This team is set for the future. And uh, I think we're pretty much done here, so... Yeah, we'll just get the team set up and then probably wrap up after that. You're not getting Ben Skinner from us. Come on. All right, guys. So I'm going to make some roster moves here before we really get into lineup breakdown and captains and all that stuff. I think, you know, this year we got Zajac still and Jason K as the captains. Um, the goaltending you guys are going to enjoy in just a second here, but um let's go to roster moves let's move some players around uh, there's a couple guys i want to give chances to in the nhl or the big leagues so first guy we're gonna give a shot to is going to be i believe bugstad's a sniper yes yeah sixth round or two like that's insane so we're gonna give cameron bugstad a shot we're going to give him along with um, Carson Lamb, who we just acquired a couple seasons ago. So we're going to have Bukestad, Lamb, and Nash, I think. 
the young the youngins here we're gonna give those guys all shots at the league as well as maybe um maybe Ekblad too no not Ekblad that's too many defense then um and in exchange we're going to send actually no yeah maybe Ekblad hold on maybe Ekblad over Thibaut mainly just because Bernard Thibaut really hasn't done all that much to be completely honest so yeah let's give lamb and ekblad the call up i can't do more than three at a time it's so dumb okay so we're gonna send tebow down we're gonna send higgins and we're gonna send scoville or no sorry not scoville oh we're gonna send ratchnik so that's what we're gonna do nice and quick here obviously we're gonna have to edit lines and we'll see how that looks um let me make some more roster moves, actually. So we're going to pull one more guy, obviously, like I just said. And that one more guy is going to be Nolan Ekblad. Okay, perfect. Bugstad fits nicely. That's not bad. Only thing is we got one too many playmakers on this line versus if we put, well, let's give Parker Nash a shot. Okay, he's not bad, but he'd probably be better here, which again is too bad. So maybe Nash will go and sit for one season give him the opportunity to get his skating up a bit more maybe something like that so maybe instead of Nash we try Scoville I think that's the play and Scoville does fit just a tad better but at the same time I kind of want to keep that Nash um, that Nash Bukestad chemistry together because they were playing together in cam loops in the WHL and literally torched it. And they were drafted a year apart too, which is even crazier. So those guys look good. The defense is also just stacked, stacked to the roof. But um, let's give Lamb the shot here. Maybe like that. Ooh. Now that's interesting. Give Carson Lamb a little bit of extra playtime where he probably doesn't deserve it. And then, of course, Grand Pierre is just going to get crazy power play minutes along with guys like Colburn and Kasparitis. But, man, that looks so nice as a lineup. The only thing is that Latowski is actually a top four defenseman um, who should be getting more minutes probably. So it is roll all pairings. So I'm not really disappointed in that. And then the scratch lineup actually looks really good. So we got a playmaker power forward and a two-way defenseman that fits the system in Ekblad. So I think we're set there. I'm not going to show you guys the goaltending just yet. I'm going to go fix my lineup up here. So we got Smeed there. Okay. Um, let's try Sokolov. I would love if he actually fits, and he kind of does. So let's go Sokolov there. Put Ratchnik here. Ratchnik does not fit there at all. Okay, Calvin Urkamps. Maybe could. No, we can't really give him extra play time there, unfortunately. Oh, so it's Hedekin who doesn't fit. Okay. Try Komatov up a little bit more. Unfortunately, I think Kelvin Urkamps is just, he's had some moments where he's just played huge in the moment. Like, he was absolutely a beast, but we also got other guys like Higgins and players like such in here that are just better for the lineup, so. A guy I want you to keep an eye on here as we get through the last episode next time is Ben Skinner. We're not really going to get to highlight his abilities, but just keep an eye on him because I think he's going to make an impact. And then, of course, we got him with a guy like Marcus Sokolov, too, who might just turn out to be something special. 
Um, goalies are pretty weak down in the AHL, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Defensively, let's move Bailey down to play with Lilia. That looks all right. And then for scratch players, we got a defensive defenseman there in Tebow. And him and Veenanen don't really work. That's actually better. I like the Kalanos and uh, Tebow pairing there. That could work. Besides that, Olsen's okay. Lacerte, I don't think is actually going to make it, unfortunately. Same with Nishushkin. Dadanov is a goalie. Kali Janssen, again, just a little bit too low rated. And same with Schostrom and Urkamps. Okay. So that is the AHL lineup. We got some crazy good chemistry down in the bottom pairings. Um, don't ask me why or how it works like that, but it does. And then that's the defense. So, so yeah. Um, there's nobody in there that's, like, really crazy good. But, you know, there are some good players, obviously. And then... Um, well, let me just uh, quickly get the comment set up so then I can highlight that and then we'll wrap it up from there. All right, guys, so this is the Kelowna Comets lineup. We are going to be rocking for the starting of the wrap up video, I guess you're going to call it. So, really insane, crazy good looking team. Um, Jason K, Charlie K, and Zach Redmond this year. Zachariah Redmond is going to get the start up on that top line. I'm expecting an absolutely huge year out of him. He, you know, really didn't have a sophomore slump. He got even better in less games, scored more goals, and was just fantastic. Had a crazy good plus minus and scored more. So that's always good. Um, I think he's going to absolutely thrive with the K brothers for the next couple seasons, although they are 32 and 33 years old now. Jason K has lost his... Um, exact elite potential as well as Weston Zajac. So that might be worrisome. I'm not really too sensitive or worried about it, honestly, because I think this Comets team has such crazy good players coming up through the system that I'm genuinely not worried about it. I think that the team's going to do just fine. When you look at guys like Smead, I don't know if Sokolov's really going to make it. We'll see, um, to be completely honest with you. But we have enough potential down there that I'm not not freaking out about it at all that these guys are starting to drop off potential wise um but it's just crazy to see how good they've played like look at look at weston's ajak man he has been one of the best comets ever um obviously the k brothers are just on a whole nother level they should be hitting the 1500 point mark this year i would assume um they're both just neck and neck in the point race it's crazy um how many points did Charlie K have? Just 114 this year. Nothing crazy, but or this past season. So, yeah, um, that's the lineup. I think Jorgen Steen's going to thrive on the third line. I think he's better than that, honestly, but we can't really move him up chemistry-wise. And then on the defense, of course, we have that crazy top pairing, but Gustavo Colburn's actually become remarkably better than um, Kai Hardikainen, so keep an eye on Colburn there. He could turn into something crazy good this upcoming year um and then of course Litowski and Grand Pierre they're gonna lock it down on that third pairing and crazy good chemistry there and then there's the goaltending McMuffin very obviously an elite goaltender but then we have a 22 year old Cameron Dika who's 85 overall he's absolutely insane for how good his rating is so yeah um I think Dika wow he also won 14 out of 19 games He's gonna be he's gonna be a beast. So yeah, that's that for the uh, big leagues for the minors. Keep an eye on Ben Skinner for the upcoming year, as well as um, maybe Joel Bailey. He could be decent. The goaltending doesn't have anything too crazy going on there. And besides that, probably Zach Marks. You know, watch him. He's just 20 years old. Sokolov's 19. So. There's definitely players who could have breakout years. But anyways, that's where we're going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure to just leave your comments and support down below. It will help me to kind of, you know, push through the last 
seven seasons or so of this series, and uh, we'll get it all done in one last wrap-up episode for episode 33. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to uh, like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff, as my dog is groaning in the background. Um, And until next time.